Okay, good morning, scholars. This morning we're going to look at the number system at the grade four level. So it's an introduction to the number system. And I'm just going to read from the board and explain as I go along. So counting numbers start at one and go to infinity. What do we mean by infinity? Well, infinity is a concept used in mathematics to describe the fact that numbers go on and on and on. So we can keep counting things, one, two, three, four, going on and on into thousands, millions, trillions. On and on and on, it never ends. So that is what we mean by infinity. So you know when we start counting, we start with one. So if we have a group of objects, a group of items, and we want to know how many things are there, what number do we start counting at? Um, one. So one is the first counting number, and then we keep going in order, adding another one each time. So one, two, three, four, five. These three dots tell you that the numbers continue. Keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. When you go up to the higher levels, you will also understand that infinity goes in the opposite direction. So here, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, continuing towards infinity. However, we could go in the opposite direction and the numbers would get smaller and smaller and smaller towards what we call negative infinity. But you don't have to worry yourselves about that concept, right? So, for the time being, just bear in mind, we start counting at one, and we keep adding one, 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 keep adding another one. So, counting numbers, which are also called natural numbers, start at one and progress get bigger and bigger to infinity. Whole numbers start at zero and continue to infinity. So really then what we see is that all counting numbers are also whole numbers. So all counting numbers are whole numbers but not all whole numbers are counting numbers. Can you look and tell me which of the whole numbers is not a counting number? So look, here are the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, continuing to infinity. Here are the whole numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, continuing to infinity. So do you realize then that zero is the only whole number that is not a counting number, right? Zero is a whole number. Now you might be saying to yourselves, zero means nothing, right? Zero means nothing. So why is zero considered to be a whole number? Well, actually... A whole number is, you can get a whole number by adding or subtracting two other whole numbers by definition. So we can get zero by subtracting any number from itself. So zero is a whole number and it's also used to hold the place. It's a placeholder in other whole numbers. So for example, if I have four zero three, that's four hundred and three, the zero there in the middle is holding the place of the tens because there, there are no tens in that. There are four hundreds, three ones, but if we only wrote four and three, what number would that be? That would be 43, which would be incorrect. 
So the zero in mathematics has a very great importance as a placeholder to keep the value of numbers so when there is a place missing. So if I had 5,025, 5,025. The zero there is holding the place of the hundred because there is no hundred. Five thousand, two tens, five ones. Without the zero, which it would be five, two, five, which would be a totally different number, 525. So the zero is of great significance to mathematicians. All right, so counting numbers start at one, keep going up to infinity. Whole numbers start at zero. Keep going to infinity. Now let's look at another set of numbers. Odd numbers. Odd numbers start at 1 and go up by 2 each time from there. So from 1, we go up by 2. So we add 2, we get 3. Add 2, we get 5. Add 2, we get 7. So odd numbers go up by 2 but they are not exactly divisible by 2. So what that means is, if we divide an odd number by 2, we are going to get a remainder of 1. So if we divide 3 by 2, if we find out how many groups of 2 can, can we get from 3, we'll see that we can get one group of 2, but there's a remainder of 1. How many groups of 2 can we get out of 5? We can get 2 groups of 2 and there is a remainder of 1. How many groups of 2 can we get out of 7? We can get 3 groups of 2, still a remainder of 1 is left back. So whenever you find, if you want to check, right, if you're not sure if a number is odd, just divide it by 2. See how many groups of 2 can you get from that number. And if, when you divide it into groups of 2, you end up with a remainder of 1. There's one left out. You can't pair it with another to make a group of 2. That tells you you're dealing with an odd number. You can also recognize odd numbers because they end in these digits. So if you know the first couple odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, once you know those first five odd numbers, any number, no matter how big it is, whether it's in the hundreds, the thousands, the millions, once, it, once the last digit in that number is a 1, 3, five, seven, or nine, you are absolutely, definitely dealing with an odd number. It doesn't matter how big the number is. Just look at the end of the number. The last digit, is it a, a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine? You are dealing with an odd number. Now, we could say the opposite of odd numbers are even numbers. We could say that. And the reason we would say that is even numbers start at 2. They go up by 2. Just like odd numbers, they go up by 2. But the even number is exactly divisible by 2. That means when you divide an even number into groups of 2, so you're trying to see how many groups of 2 can I get out of this number? You will always get an exact number of groups of two. There will be no remainder. And that's why we can say even numbers and odd numbers are opposites. Even numbers will always end with 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So once you know those, the first 
including the zero at the end for even numbers, if it ends with a zero, two, six, or eight, then we know that we're dealing with an even number. It does not matter how big it is. Just look at the end, look at the digit at the end. If it ends with a zero, two, four, six, or eight, it's even. So let's look at two other types of numbers, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. Cardinal numbers tell how many items there are. So basically then, we go back to our counting numbers. If you have a group of items, if you have a group of people, if you want to count the fruits in your basket, you want to count your toys, you want to count the books in your bag. Whenever you're counting how many, one by one you're counting. So it's one, two, three, four, five books. Or you want to say, I have 25 marbles. Or Patricia has two pairs of shoes. Those are cardinal numbers because they tell you just how many are there. That's all they tell you, how many. Ordinal numbers, ordinal numbers tell the position. This is the important word here. The position of the items. So after you counted the items for the cardinal number, now you want to see where is this item in relation to the others. What is the position of this item? So let's say you're in a line with your friends at the canteen to get lunch. The person who is at the head of the line is first, in the first position. First is an ordinal number. Second, third, twentieth. 100, it tells you what place you are in. So let's say you got the highest score in mathematics in the test. You placed first in mathematics. The person who got the mark closest to you placed second, and the other person placed third, and so on. So those are ordinal. If you look at the word here, ordinal, what does it remind you of? Order. What order is it in? So think of a line. Think of ordering things in sequence. And then you're going to say what is the position of one thing in relation to the other things. Alright? So just to recap... Counting numbers start at 1, because when we're counting, we say 1 first, 1, 2, and then we continue. We don't start counting and say 3 and continue, right? We start at 1, and counting numbers go on and on and on. You cannot stop counting till you die. If you start counting from you just learn to count, maybe at two some of some of us start earlier right some of us are brilliant we start counting even before when we just learn to speak if you start counting at that age as a toddler and you keep counting until the day you die there will always be another number somebody else will have to continue counting after you are gone and somebody after them and somebody after them, and somebody after them. They go to infinity. Whole numbers are the counting numbers plus zero. And remember, zero is of great importance to us as mathematicians, as scholars. We must recognize the importance of the digit zero. Odd numbers go up by two, but they are not divisible by two. They are not exactly divisible by two. 
So we'll always have a remainder of 1. Even numbers also go up by 2. So the next even number in line will be 2 more. Even numbers are exactly divisible by 2. Cardinal numbers are really the counting numbers. They tell us how many things. And ordinal numbers tell us where each thing lies in the line in relation to the other things in the line. So this, is, this was an introduction to the number system at grade 4. Remember, bear in mind, there are many, 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 many more types of numbers. But we are just focusing on these at this level, as you go further in your career as a mathematician, you will encounter a whole, a wide range of numbers. All right, so just master these ones for now. Master these and you're going to be good. All right, so take care and I'll see you next time.